with your girl Sheila O and this is how far how far now how you all doing hope you're well hope you're all keeping safe my guest today is the <clears throat> Ghanaian Afro pop dance hall and reggae international superstar he's also the CEO of Burnington Music Group he won the best international act African category at the 2015 BET Awards. He also picked up the 2015 Ghana Music Awards, just to name a few. He's also a recipient of two billboard plaques. He has been described as the king of reggae, dance hall, for artists in Africa. Well, as far as I'm concerned, in the world. You all know how I feel about Stone Boy. He's an actor, he's an activist, and he's a philanthropist. Stone Boy, aka One God, how far? I do, I do, well, there well, I do, can't I do, can't <laughs> I do, can't I do, always say. I do, well, 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 well. It's so good to have you on the show. It's so good to have you on the Thank show. You. Let's start off with your accolades, okay? <clears throat> Congratulations, bro. Major congrats for the Thank success you so of your recent album, Angola Junction. You've hit 20 million streams and counting. And, bro, yeah. you did this in less than two months. Yeah, absolutely. Like just about it. It's like nine weeks, so like eight months. You know, it's it's it's, it's you know, it's wow. remarkable as well. You know, You're remarkable. So Stone God, where is Angola Junction? Let's start with that. Introduce Angola Junction to us. Where is it? <clears throat> See, um, it's I mean, it's pronounced Angola Junction. I know okay, Angola, Angola Junction. It's easy, you see it easy like that, but it's cool. Um, Angola Junction right now is at a point where, um, it's the last body of work that I released, which is my. Uh, latest album. It includes um, songs featuring Kerry Hilson, featuring Jamil from Jamaica, featuring Nasty C, featuring Diamond Platinum, featuring uh, Kojo Entry from Ghana, featuring uh, Alekai Haile and uh, Shiv, you know. So it uh, collective, collectively it brings together all other styles, you know, from uh, across the globe. So you have the Americas, you have the Easting, Westing, you know, and and, and, and Southing, South of Nigeria, um, part of Africa, you know, yeah. exhibiting their styles on the album. It's a very smooth one and a good one to listen to, you know, and uh, I think numbers wise is doing um, massive. It's doing massive and, uh, and like you can see, only on um, Audio Mac, it's been able to stream 20 million, you know, already and counting, which is the first ever heights as a Ghanaian yep. artist on Audio Mac. So yep. that's a history that I said right there, you know, and we're going to break it again with something else later. That's and, what's uh, up. That album is doing amazing and I'm still working on videos for it, you know, so we're looking to dropping um, other videos from the album and continuing to promote the album because we've broken down the promotional strategy mm -hmm. in phases. We've been able to roll out phase one that we have had to adjust to the ongoing situation now, which is Corona. Yeah. And then, so we have other phases of the promotional campaign to roll out, you know, mm -hmm. to continue to promote the album. So that's where we are now, right? That's where we are right now with the album. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, there's Afro beats, there's highlight, there's uh, Afro alternative. How would you categorize your sound, Stone Boy? Should we say world music, burden and African port? Hey, hey. <laughs> that's a first. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Fire. Okay. I like it. Patois and dancehall comes natural to you. Natural mm -hmm. to you. Do you think mm -hmm. there's a root connection between Jamaicans and Ghanaians? 100,000%. <laughs> educators, man. Educators. Tell us. You know, I was reading the other day via uh, my second post. I know I follow all this history and stuff i believe that our african history have, has not been told to us the way it should be mm -hmm. but um uh, whose fault is it it is no other no nobody's fault because you don't expect uh, foreigners to tell you about mm -hmm. yourself and in the end put you above them so it's a duty of us to actually learn and know and understand that in the end as black people we're all africans first and foremost before we find ourselves anywhere else on the continent yep. and therefore um, Ghana and Jamaica does definitely have their links. You can throw it back to uh, recently 
where we all did the year of return in Ghana and it was huge. I think there were a lot of write-ups and a lot of revelations made about how Ghana has played an active role geographically in actually um, shipping the first squad of slaves from here into America. And therefore, you realize that the Jamaica spread across our own African brothers and sisters, cut from today's Ghana, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, Ivory Coast. You know, these are all of us spread uh, spread along the coast of the Caribbean. So yeah. we do definitely have um, a route, you know. They do, we do have roots together, you know, yeah. no matter wherever we find ourselves. And therefore, we share the same, you know, culture as well you know right in our dna's you know that we have it stuck down there mm-hmm. so what i do as an african an african another african can relate anywhere in the world regardless yeah. of, of 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 where they remained or whether they were you know you know what i mean so there are yeah. connections between us and the jamaicans especially ghana that's how come you find out that you know um there's a lot that we love reggae. We, we, I yeah. mean, we, we, we literally, I think Ghana would have been a direct representation of, of Jamaica if there were no Jamaicans. Yep. I, I only think so. But nonetheless, I've also going to find out that um, the other Caribbean countries, yeah. you know, even have deeper ties with Ghana and the West African countries. You yeah. know, and uh, it's amazing to even know cut all the way into Brazil and the rest you know. so That's right. we all have roots we are rooted as black people our roots is in Africa so we share everything music, culture, lifestyle it's, it's similar but it's not similar because it just looks alike it's similar because it's the same thing that has been cut across and spread over time and all these occurrences so. yep Vega that was a nice explanation appreciate that bro Okay, let's talk about Miss Carrie Hilson, okay? Carrie Hilson, mm-hmm. someone that uh, disappeared from my radar, and I play radio. <laughs> she disappeared from my radar, but then you made her reappear on my radar with a collaboration that you both did. Um, mm-hmm. So how was the link up? How did you come about working with Miss Carrie Hilson? All right, thank you. Um, you know, to comment on the disappearance, first and before I get <laughs> onto the, you know, just like how you arranged it, I think uh, it's not easy. She she wouldn't be the only one to be termed as disappeared True. when it comes to the, the the music from from the West. We all know how difficult it is to maintain, even as an artist, and all the other internal troubles that there are. Mm-hmm. Where I know that um, somebody like you is privy to all those mm-hmm. all those happenings, you know, yeah. that can find um, an artist you know, being referred to as missing or disappeared, you can mm-hmm. understand that they still have the passion and they're even working, they're still re- doing stuff. Mm-hmm. But it, there's another level to whether you're going to be appearing every time or <laughs> you have to stay disappeared. You know, like <laughs> if I can say so. So right. that's what I can say about that, you know, as opposed to us as Africans, most of us are really independent. Most of these mm-hmm. big names that you hear from the African continent as artists and actors and stuff, we are independent. So we choose how to appear, where to appear, when to appear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. But the collaboration with uh, she, uh, me and her it came, it happened. I should mm-hmm. say so, like it's divine. You know, while I was working on the album, I knew that with the theme that I wanted to approach, I should be, I should be able to get an American feature as well because definitely the world looks to America when it comes to the glitz and the glamour. That's right. You know? And for fashion, I think we look to Europe and France and all that. But when it comes to, you know, the, the vibe, when it comes to the vibe. The US, man. You know, the US. You know, US we look up to. So I also want, needed to have, I wanted to have a, a feature from that end to complete the whole world kind of album that I was putting together. So God heard my prayers, and lo and behold, a friend of mine met Kerry on a flight, and then they exchanged numbers, and then it got to me, and then the, 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 the whole thing began. She and I began to talk, so we built that rapport as friends, literally before <clears throat> the music came through. The discussion was not direct music, let's do it. Then it started by, oh, that's another artist, that's another artist, and that's it, we, we linked up. So it happened that I flew into the States for a four city tour, my, like a four state tour. And mm-hmm. then during that period as well, 
she invited me over to her studio and we did some amazing works, not only one work. And everything just kept falling in place. At the time, Dre Harris was also meant to work with her. So mm -hmm. he, he got into the studio and I was there. The vibe was right. We built some amenity right from the scratch. The first thing Dre played on, the first melodies he played on mm -hmm. the keyboard were just those ones that we start with to build the song nominate. So and we built another one that's sitting down with still working on it. And we are, we are willing to, you know, we will we'll be doing a lot more. So that's how nominates came about. Wow. I followed it up, went in to shoot the video just uh, this year, March, and mm -hmm. then we put it on an album. And it's the biggest song right now, I can say, it on is. that side. It, it is. is um, it's running the charts in Africa. I mean, in Africa, not only in Ghana, all of Africa, and the world loves it. I think it's gotten a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's gotten a lot of attention, or it, 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 it you know, it helped mm -hmm. to push the album as well. You know, with the fact that it's, it's, it's me and Kerry Hill saying the collaboration is like, well, and then for the fact that she's been, she has not appeared, you know, for a very long time. Yeah. You know. I mean, it's 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 a great collaboration. It's so <clears> smooth, as far as I'm concerned. We played on a regular here. Very smooth. Sure. I mean, it's different, so smooth. Different. It's different, you know. It's different. You know, and I th and I I really hope that she also appreciates the fact that you gave her a new market, a bigger audience, and a bigger platform. You got to give yes, credit where credit is due because I saw Absolutely. one of her interviews where she gave you credit. And she talked about your huge entourage. I'm like, that's how he yeah. rolled. He yeah, rolled yeah, the village. A king. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Never goes this stone boy thank alone. You. It's not possible. He is a king. So yeah, big ups to you for that one. That was that was really great. Which other thank producers you, in the man. US or even in the UK the US, or anywhere else in the world thank are you, you trying to mash up with right now? Who you <clears throat> yeah, right now, um, I mean, I I'm still working with a lot of you know for international producers, but those that I've worked on. Those that I've worked with on the album, I need to give some credit. I've worked with M to the A, mm. he's a British producer. I've worked with Nana Rooks. These two boys have done great for themselves. And they're all from Ghana as well, but they live oh. in the UK. And they've done an amazing job on beautiful people, you know, from Emily Sunday to... Uh, yeah. They've done stuff to yeah. big names, big names in the UK. And I've done with um, Ghana's own Street Beats. It was like one of my in-house. Mix Master Gazi, who who did who did the mastering of the whole album eventually. It was a Ghanaian, it's like you know, it's like another in-house brother. Um in all I had like 13 producers on a 15 track album. Oh. So literally it was produced by every, you know. So when you go and check out the album and the details, you find out all this information. So I'm still open to working with a lot of other producers because you know it, it's not a one man business. Yeah. You, you need all, you know, two heads are better than one. So, yep. Yeah. Internationally now, um, I think I've earned the <clears> right <throat> to say this uh, because of my platform. You are currently holding the plaque for Ghana. Ghana, not, not just Accra, Ghana. You are holding the plaque yeah. for Ghana as the mainstream international music superstar. I mean, with all due respect, you can't talk about Ghana without not mentioning Stoneboy. You can't. And so congratulations for doing that. Massive respect. <coughs> Absolutely. And what advice would you give for those really coming grateful. up behind Thank you, you trying Thank to get you. into that same lane that you have achieved globally? Um, what I can say is that uh, this goes to myself as well. Um, there's a need to have a foresight. There's a need to look outside of the box, you know, mm -hmm. and be able to know that where you're going, you have to carry a piece of you alongside but you need to also be very talented enough and hardworking enough and realize that you also would have to study what goes on out there to be able to add what you are bringing on to the, um, uh, onto the plate, you know, to make it work for you, to make it, to make you stand out. <clears throat> so I think that is what I've been able to do now. You know, I took on the reggae and dance style and I put in my Afrobeat approach to it. And that's how you ever have Afro dance -all, if you ever heard that word. Yeah. It's uh, yours faithfully. I turned out that word, you know, yeah. not not just because I brought out that style, but I took it to a different level where I was able to represent properly where people be like, yo, that man, Ayadi, you know, mm -hmm. like they'd be like, oh, he's a Jamaican. He's not a Jamaican. The argument goes on there because I believe that I've continued to study to show myself approved 
on that end and also show myself approved here as an Afri- as, as an African in Africa. Yeah. You know, also representing for the styles of Africans outside of Africa, which is reggae, dance, or R&B, calypso, soca. It's all our stuff yeah. still. You know what I mean? Yeah. So these are the things you should consider and be able to do well and just keep going. Yeah. That's what's up. You're currently the global ambassador for sanitation and mm-hmm. a brand ambassador for Voltic Natural Mineral Water. How mm-hmm. do you balance the duties of being, you know, A-list music artist, international, and also a global ambassador? How do you balance mm-hmm. both? Yeah, man. To add up to the list, there's also Big there's Boss more? Energy Drink. More? There's okay. also Big Boss Energy Drink. And there's okay. more in the pipeline. And also, like, you know, I own my own merchandise as well, which is called the Bean Brand. Mm-hmm. And we have, like, a like a, we have like a huge shop in my city where I was, it's just, like, where I was, where I come from. I have, like, yeah. a shop right there where proceeds go on. And I, and I also have a foundation, which we do just indulge in skills training. Because yesterday yeah. was a World Skills Day. Yes. So, even prior to that, you know, we had launched the first edition of BIM Skills, which is supposed to train people who've lost the, the youth, the youth, because a lot of us don't have gainfully, you know, um, um, we, we don't have employment, but we're not gainfully employed, you That's know, right. and our lives are, seems to be wasting about, but with the little that I can do, you know, the foundation just started to introduce the BIM Skills to educate people on learning some skills across all board from agro food processing to nice. you know to 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 craft all these ones so just to add up to the list before <laughs> the question comes here yeah. because it's really important to identify you know it is put on those points as well yeah it is it is i really appreciate that i, le- yeah. I really appreciate that it because it's not easy it's not easy having so, to do both yeah. you know and it keeps yeah, going it's right? definitely not easy now let me answer the question sorry <laughs> i got lost while trying to add on to that it's number. fine um, it, it can't be easy uh, but it feels good because in the end um 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 um, um you you i feel like i'm, I'm being I'm, I'm i'm putting myself to use yeah that's just how i feel like i'm putting myself to use in the best of my capacity you know I'm not the president of Ghana, neither am I the president of Africa. I'm not even the MP of a shy man where I represent yeah. or, you know, where I come from. I'm not even, but this is me. I'm just like a, like a son of the soil, like a citizen of Ghana and an African son, you know, global citizen. I owe, I owe fellow humans and myself the right to do the most, you know, to enhance my life and enhance people's life. Because, you know, they say we rise by lifting others, but I can't right. give all the credit to myself, you know, as easy as it is not. It's also not, uh, it, you always have to have a team around you, you know, people who are level-headed, you know, or a person who is level-headed. Because I believe in a saying that says the the army in the mind mm-hmm. have to be mightier than the army on the road on the road totally because you can have a million fools who can achieve nothing and you can have two wise people lock it down (laughs) you can lock it down so i always believe in trying to listen to the right persons you know and taking the right advice of people who are actually experienced you know what i mean because you can't tell me about driving when you don't have a car that's right that's right so these are things that also help me to keep going and a lot of other people who hold my hand uh, in front of the screen and behind the screen to also make things going on. So generally, it's not easy for us all. You know, like <laughs> but we make it work. Yeah, yeah. We make it work. Okay, Stone Boy, it's time for this part of the show that we call Talk the Talk, okay? Mm-hmm. Here we ask you real honest questions. We want you to just give it to us straight and hard. The first one is, I had a guest on the show, no names mentioned, much respect to that guest. Uh, and he <laughs> said that he thinks that dance hall, um, dance hall birth Afrobeats. Do you agree or don't you agree? What is Stone Boy's answer to that? What do you think? Uh, dance or birth Afrobeat. Okay, let's let's take it like this. Um, um, I would I would say that uh, off head, without mm-hmm. having done any research, mm-hmm. off head, I think like off head, without having done any research, what the, the the African music or if African music that we term as Afrobeat was mm-hmm. not birthed by dance music. 
I think as Africans as we are and our roots and our music, mm -hmm. we keep churning out all these genres. And when you pick dancehall, you can still strike it down back to the roots. Mm -hmm. But if you say Afro beats that we know today, it depends on who answered that as a question because I live on the continent. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I have to tell the truth and represent for the truth. That's you right. Know? In, 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 even, in even a deeper perspective, more than anybody will just think. Dancehall, I would say, paved the way definitely. Mm. What's very much popular than today's Afrobeats. Mm. Before, you know, so it took the lead before this. Yeah. Because in the end, I think probably you can attest sometime, some few 10 years back or 15 years back, even 10, Dancehall was like, yeah. Like yeah. dancer artists will get a break everywhere in the West, yeah. in the world. We're talking about the Beanie Mans, the Shaba, the Bujus, yeah. the, the Bon Tequilas. Yeah. When they, they did R&B, you could find big arts doing like R&B music and then they featured them on that. Straight up. Like because that was a feeling, that was a thing. So that definitely took the lead. Meanwhile, African music was not given, or let me say, was not given, yes. Mm -hmm. that's one and did not have that breakthrough that it has now now you know because 10 15 years ago i believe if you pick an african music that has made it in the west or that has broken um, um to that level you pick songs from angelique joe mm -hmm. baba mal and you pick songs from all those people so those were categorized literally as Af African, I don't know how they call it by the time, yeah. like yeah. the Afro beat. So <laughs> that was like for the elderly and for the people who were like Pan Africans, or if you wanted yeah. to dig down your roots. So there was a classification to it to an extent. But now it has grown from there with the influx or by the influence of this same dancehall now, you know. You know, to get onto that level. So we have now, I think what we did is to carry the dancehall energy as new school people and bring on our Afrobeat that is not necessarily as deep as the Afrobeat of the Angeliki Joes and the Baba Mouth and those mm -hmm. other African legends. Yeah. We've brought that style to a certain place now which inculcates every other thing for, the, for, 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 for people to enjoy and is capable to enter the West easily, you know. So if all the talk I'm talking is right, the yeah. African music has been there and has been the bedrock way, way, way before the dancehall music, the reggae music, because it's all right. driven inspiration from the motherland, which we are. So there's no fight. It's just one. It's just us. It I can find the way. But today's world, as we're in, I think dancehall took the lead to break through the West because it has become a yardstick. Whatever breaks through the West is what they is, is what is what they listen to. It's not about what you know. So now they know Afrobeat by the help of um, youngsters. I just want to mention New School. Two Face is New School to me in a way. They put mm -hmm. the, they took it to a level. The Banch them took it to a level. David them took it to a level. Whiskey them took it to a level. Myself, we're putting in all that effort. I've always referred to myself as that kind of Ghanaian, that type of African artist who is blended the Jamaican style to the Afrobeat style. You find so, the whiskeys and all doing the straight Afrobeat style, but yeah. brought it up a bit. It's not that deep. It's more relatable. It's more commercial. Yeah, mainstream. So that's all I can I, I can say. And even so, mm -hmm. I think that the mainstream decides on what they want to work with, you know, and term as what they can accept to have that look at, look like is mainstream. But aside that, there are a million talented musicians who are doing different, beautiful forms of Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. I don't want, I didn't add the S because <laughs> I want to, I want to mean yep. the Afrobeat, Afrobeat. Afro yep. Which can be acceptable as well. But now it's beautiful, you see, we're, we're, it, it, you know, it's nice. <laughs> In the next 10, 5 years, I think that we're all going to be, you know, I don't mean for us to lose our roots whatsoever. As much as people will defend what they always have been, yeah. you know, I believe that in the next five, ten years, minus all these viruses that tend to kill the world and depopulate us and all of that, the beautiful thing is going to be that black people will sing one song in the end, different right. kind of things, but we will understand that this is ours. 
you know, because you find out that Jamaicans are relating, the Caribbeans are relating to the thing. You know, people of color are relating to the thing everywhere you go. They're relating, they know, because it's in our DNA. Whether um, Afro dancer, whether raw Afro beat, whether yeah. high life music, whether soca music, yeah. wherever, however it is, once it's of the DNAs and it's of the grassroots of Africa, all Africans, blue, black, purple, or white, can relate and can sing to it in a few years. That's what's up, one God. That's what's up. Okay, the year of return has been a big success. Okay, Ghana was the first to open these pathways. Big shout out going out to Nana Kufour, the president of Ghana, you know, for taking that, in, that initiative. You know, what advice would you give to African Americans with regards to taking advantage of that initiative? Yeah, Do you man, think they should come? Um, um, Do you think Ghana's ready? Do you think the president is, he means well, but Ghana is not ready, or do you think Ghana is ready and the African Americans should come? What do you think? Thank you very much. I think it's not a nine-day wonder. It can't take a, it can take two, three, four, five, six, even ten years to happen, yeah. but it can happen. It's all about the mindset because we have had people repatriating to Africa a long time before the year of return was launched. Yeah. We've had people settling in Ghana among them, my own eyes, Jamaicans who would leave their properties and sell things to want to retail to because there, there has been that drive from year, from years, 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 years before that was launched. But I think that was a, a a very good stepping stone where like this is an initiative put together by a government, yeah. you know, to open up openly because I believe that before then he visited Jamaica to also tighten up the ties with Jamaica and the other few Caribbean nations that they have a home here in Africa because Ghana is termed as the gateway to Africa. So as far as readiness is concerned, I think we have been ready. It depends on who, you know, they Americans, whoever is in the diaspora, I think they have been ready. But it has to, it, ha, it, it, would, it will have to make economic sense for people because in the end, uh, it's not just about moving, it's about living. And if you have to live, then you have to consider all the other factors that will make you live well and live good to continue to represent the right. belief. You know what I mean? And we all know that the world is fed from and by Africa anyway. So when it comes yes. to resources and all these things, there is a there is hope, you know. But managing these things to become value in the pocket of all of us, be it those that are here already or those that want to come and join me has always been a problem. You know, the management in a whole. As always, so people gotcha. do come, some stay for a few months and they can't stand it. Right. Because they're not used to the system. Yeah. They, they don't understand why something to be that way and it frustrates them and yeah. they run away. A lot of them, I'm just speaking the truth, a lot of yeah. them bring in a lot of, you know, money to come and invest in a certain field and that. And then it turns out that you realize it's not as e it's not as it's not as it, it's not as easy as you you would have envisioned it to be. So, um, you know, I think these are the factors that are making it seem like some people are ready, some people are not, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we want it to happen, I think, is enough that it, that the government has come out to open up its borders like that. It's enough for people to you know want to try because in the end. It's not all gloomy out there in the States. Neither is it all no, gloomy not. here in Africa. Neither is it all gloomy here in Africa for you to think that the biggest opportunities. Yes, we have opportunities here. We have opportunities everywhere. But um, it's not easy to actually work it out. But let's try. Let's do it together. I know there are a lot of factors to consider. But let's do it together. Let's build Africa as a nation. Because it's only us that can build us. That's right. You know? Anybody else who comes in, would have to check out for their interests first and it's not going to go for our interests so you know if there are opportunities which there are i think mm -hmm. we should rise and come and take it and build our own you know over here that's what the president actually wants and needs okay that's what's up you are also the pioneer behind one of the biggest 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 festivals in ghana way before even afro nation stepped into your shores yeah, um man. Would there be um, any festival this year with what's going on in the world? What are we doing end of the year, uh, Stoneboy? Hey, what's happening? You know, what's happening? Chano, uh, we're still thinking. We're still in the process of thinking how to get it to the people uh, in the best way to still give them that experience. If, uh, if, 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 depending on you know the corona pandemic, 
people are all, you know, running to the virtual space now. But mm. it's my prayer that by October, you know, because that's, I really, I, I mostly do the Shyman to the World yeah. concert, which is the biggest. And then the Beam concert also, I do them between October and December. Mm-hmm. You know, one is like a charity one that is done in my city, you know, mm-hmm. where you find the last time the media counted up to say like a hundred thousand plus people. So that's like mm-hmm. a huge crowd that we pull out there, you know, to to it's like a festival which has been running for seven years now. Mm-hmm. So we will see what to do and how to go about it. We only hope that um things get better, you know, and we're able to because it feels better when we're in person, yeah. delivering the music and having fun and all of that. So, depending on how it goes, I think by the end of August, September, we'll be able to, to find let us know. whether we're gonna whether we're gonna go outdoors trade or we're gonna go mm-hmm. virtual or we're not gonna go at all or we're gonna find a way to improvise and do something in place of that and push it to next year if possible okay yeah. that's what's up okay i want to yeah. play a quick game and i'm gonna let you go because i know you're a busy man okay it's called what's your please. slice <laughs> <laughs> please i have time for you now you, you know Don't you've worry. always held you us down you've you always held us down you. man. family like you then you know you are i i i'm not but i'm not being biased but you make <laughs> our job easy we are out here trying yeah. to play the music. We are out here trying to bridge the gap. We are out here trying mm-hmm. to make sure you guys mm-hmm. get the right accolades. So when I meet artists like you who are passionate and you, mm-hmm. you dig deep to bring out the very best of you, uh, we roll yeah. out the red carpet for you. But I want to play this game with you, Stone mm-hmm. Boy. Okay, it's called What's Your Slang? So I'm coming to Ghana for the very first time. Which mm-hmm. slangs do you think I need to know? Ghanaian slangs do you think I need to know to survive? my staying gone. Wow. Ghanaian slangs. Wow. It's pigeon, literally. Um, wow, you get the Charlie. Mm-hmm. Charlie. Charlie is like, yo, I don't even know where that Charlie comes from. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. Well, I don't know whether it was coined out from Charlie. I should find out. This is interesting. Yeah. Find out how that originates. I want to know. On these things. Yeah. So Charlie, yeah. It's like a pleasant, like, hey, hi. It goes for girl, it goes for men as well. You need to know that. Um, um, literally, you need to know me pacho, mm-hmm. which is um, please, please or I beg you, which is please or I beg you, depending on uh, and medasi, thank you, which is three as well. Oh. Mm-hmm. So at least with this three, when you say please and you please say and thank, thank you, you'll be all right. <laughs> Uh, please and thank you now and then you can say hi it's, it's, it's the basic at least if you don't know anything you say chale <laughs> and then you start you try to get understood and after that you say medasi and, and, you and you're good <laughs> <laughs> you don't want no trouble do you <laughs> no no so i appreciate you one last thing though thank what you. should we look out for for you i mean the year started well for you i don't even know if covid affected you at all i don't think so uh, <laughs> Think so, go. so yes. boy, boy, what do we expect for you yeah. from you for the rest of the year? Uh, I mean, what's up you your see? Tell us. You all right? Before anything, you know me. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big follower of Africans. You know, big respect to you for representing for Africa. It's not every time you people have to be talking about what we have done but we also have to be talking about what you people have done and a lot like you who have opened the doors and connected and even done the works you know you've even done works that i think every artist team member should be doing for them but also because of the love and knowing that we have somewhere to go and represent them for the culture so i just want to use this opportunity to say thank you so very much mm-hmm. and we appreciate that on the other all the other musicians as well thank you and the rest of the year uh, like it looks like it looks like I've never been even affected. It was all because of God Almighty. I'm planned, you know. But I have been. If not, so if this is how it looks like I've never been affected. Imagine if there's no corona. Imagine. Tell me the world wide. Ah uh, <laughs> so the rest of the year I leave it in the hands of God because I am a big, big believer of the power of God. That's why I think boom. It says bless his imperial majesty every day, every time. We keep blessing him. God to keep us going because we don't own the earth. The earth owns us and he owns the earth and owns us all together. That's so right. I leave it all to God and I'm just going to keep positive. Pray. 
windows of Sarat. I'll also use the uh, internet access and do the virtual stuff. That's the plan I have in the end. Uh, I wish everybody well. I wish myself well. Let's keep alive. Let's keep safe. Let's continue to work hard. And the latter part of 2020, the plans are there already. So we just hope that we are alive to be able to achieve them. You know, big up. I'm big up to everybody tuning in right now. I don't know. Stone Boy from Ghana. Just know. Much yeah. respect. Thank yeah, you so yeah, much, yeah, guys. Go yeah, cop that yeah, album, yeah. Angola. I know yeah. I keep pronouncing wrong. I say Angola. No, see, it's intentional. It's Angola. But Angola. I know people will pronounce it Angola. If you say Angola, yeah. you're still referring to Africa. It's us. See? <laughs> yeah. One love. One love, Stone Boy. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for stopping by and how far. Thank you very we much. I'm grateful. That. Yeah. Big up. Yeah, man. Thank We're gonna say then how far, how far, yeah, how far many things are you they do, my brother? How far, how far, yeah, how far have you gone from this journey of life? How far, how far, yeah, you don't know say so into to how far so boy from Ghana representing live and living color, yeah, me, yes.